All right, today we're going to be covering three of our favorite industrial spray guns. A couple of options here. One will be a kind of top of the line option, and then one will be more for general versatility and a little bit lower price as an option. But they're both designed for material ranging in thickness from th th zincs to top coats to epoxies. Whatever you're spraying, either gun would be able to handle that. Comes with a variety, they come with a variety of options and setups. We'll show you how they spray. This is a trophy gun. It's a little lighter gun, weighs under a pound. Uh, the other gun's a 2100 spray gun. And it weighs about 1.4 pounds, so a little bit heavier, but that is the more affordable gun. And so depending on your need and your use, one might make sense over the other. Uh, the trophy gun is available in HVLP, conventional and LVMP, and right now is offered with three tips to a kit, a 1.2, a 1.4, and a 1.8. So you can really get away with spraying almost about any material there is that you would need to, particularly when you combine the HVLP cap that might come with as a standard option and then add a conventional cap, which at that point you could add a suction cup to the bottom of the gun or uh, just use it with a pressure pot. Both are pressure fed by uh, standard. You can get both in suction or pressure. Neither are designed for gravity feed, and that's mostly because industrial paints are too thick to be fed with a gravity spray gun. So we'll show you how they spray and how they atomize uh, and kind of go from there. All right, so first up is the 2100 gun. As we mentioned, capable of spraying material anywhere from zinc to general industrial primers to top coats. One nice thing about this gun with a smaller air cap, like a 66SD air cap, which is actually what we have on there, only consumes about 7 CFM at 30 pounds of pressure. So if you're a smaller shop and you need to be able to spray material but your compressor is a little, uh, just a single stage compressor, this gun can give you decent performance without needing quite as much air. Uh, with thicker paints you may not be able to break them as well. It can be used as suction or pressure. We'll show you suction uh, pressure in this video. I've already set my pot up accordingly. Uh, for the material, this material is a medium viscosity. It's about 40 seconds in a Zon cup. And you can see here, I have about 18 pounds of fluid pressure and 30 pounds, 25 or 30 pounds of air pressure. And we'll show you the results I'm getting here. So you can see it does a good job breaking up the material, good atomization. Uh, the gun's only $273. Parts are anywhere from a fluid nozzle, $70, and air caps around $40 or $50. And it's completely rebuildable uh, from the top to the bottom. So it's a gun that's designed to last you for the long term. You can have a lot of control, even just changing out your fluid needle and your uh, air pattern. I can really tune it down quite a bit. I'll show you that here. So it's got a tapered needle. I can really control my spray right in the trigger of the gun, real small to real big. Um, just a very versatile gun. It's a Binks 2100 gun. It's our first recommendation or preference, one of our favorites for industrial coatings. Next we're going to show you uh, the Trophy Series spray gun and we'll kind of go over its benefits and features as well. All right, today now we're going to go over the Trophy gun and this one is also by Binks. Uh, the Trophy comes as HVLP or LVMP which uses medium pressure which can help with a little bit of a better breakup. Usually very popular with wood finishes and similar work like that, and then conventional as well. So we like it for industrial use because it is HVLP, can keep your paint use down quite effectively, but can also be changed over to a conventional gun just by changing this air cap, which gives you a lot of versatility when you're dealing with thick paints like a zinc or an epoxy coating, or you just want to deal with a better breakup uh, with relative ease. So much like the other coating, we're using the same material it's a medium viscosity coating. My pot settings here, I have my pressure for my fluid is roughly at 15, and my air pressure when I trigger 
is slightly above 20, which is right about where this gun is maximum supposed to be to shoot HVLP. So right now, this is how this gun performs with this medium viscosity coating and an, H, an HVLP spray. You can see I'm getting quite a big fan and the breakup's pretty good. Uh, with HVLP, it, it's got a little bit of a little bit of a rough edge to it, but if you're spraying the general industrial coating, this would be fine for an industrial quality finish. The pattern's about 10 or 12 inches. The Toy 100 gun can get a pattern very large as well. We had a smaller air cap on there just to show you kind of what it can do if you're using a smaller compressor. This gun with HVLP is going to run about 20 CFM, so it needs a little bit more air. Uh, and with conventional, we'll show you that here so you can get an idea of how that works as well. Um, as you can see, HVLP will do it, do, would do fine for you with it. And uh, the, only, the gun is more expensive. It's about like $473, comes with three tips, so one two, a one four, and a one eight. And the parts are relatively low price on this gun as of now. Uh, nozzles are in the $60 range, air caps around 45 or so, and uh, can also be rebuilt from completely. Available in pressure, suction. There's a gravity version of this gun, so if you liked it and you wanted something to use as a gravity version, you could. And, uh, comes in LVMP conventional and HVLP. We'll show you the conventional now. All right, so to change the trophy out to conventional, you get the cap off. Now, if you only own the one cap, there's a little ring in there you peel out and you have to change this. For the sake of ease, I keep a second ring and cap. You can put it right on. And that's the brown cap and that's conventional. So you can switch this gun from shooting a light to thin material that you might use HVLP for, and then in two, three seconds, change out an air cap, and you're in the conventional spray. So you can spray anything that's thick, even a zinc coating. Uh, there's up to three air caps that come available for this for a variety of material thicknesses and spray patterns. From there, uh, if you wanted a 12C cap, that gives you the option to spray suction and pressure and is uh, decent for a majority of, of coatings, but up to even a, a high viscosity or thicker coating. So I didn't change the settings on the pot. They're the same as the other they were. Now I'm getting very fine breakup, and that's because of that conventional spray. So a simple change of a cap on the trophy will let you spray about any material you want. That with, combined with the less than a pound weight and decent ergonomics, it's pretty comfortable to hold. Uh, it makes it a little bit of a, of a superior option in our minds for industrial spraying, but Ultimately, both are great choices, and given that this is a little higher price point, may not make sense for everyone. For an occasional project, 2100 gun's a great option, or for daily use where it's gonna get beaten up and broken, or just something that isn't as expensive, that's a great route to go as well. So those are two of our favorite industrial guns and kind of how they perform. Thanks for watching, and if you have any comments or questions, shoot us a message below.